It's been a record-breaking week as we saw both an FPU and national record fall courtesy of one of our Sunbirds. We'll also bring you the story of Mariah Mandelbaum and her endeavors after graduation, along with a peek at popular YouTube artist Jeff Bethke's visit to Fresno Pacific and how he came to know Christ. We've also got highlights for baseball, track, and water polo, so don't go anywhere because it's all coming up right now on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. Welcome to this week's episode of Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics. I'm your host, Katie Rocca. Following her final season with FPU, Mariah Mandelbaum had a chance to compete at the top of her sport. We got to talk to her about her transformation both spiritually and as a person during her time at FPU and how that has shaped her professional career. Well, I was blessed to have a really good high school career and so it was a local high school and so I was kind of expecting to come into FPU and it just be the same. I would walk on the floor and start and I'm, those expectations were not realized at all. The summer of my freshman year going into my sophomore year, I was really like, yeah, I'm gonna break into the lineup. Like, I deserve it, I'm working hard. But everything was really still selfish, just about me. I just got to the point where I was just like, it's not going to be me that does this. I've been trying for for two years to do it myself. The mindset just changed from being like, I'm going to play, I'm going to be the starter, I'm going to do all these things to just like, how can, how can I play better with Tiffany? How can I play better with the freshmen? How can I make it easier for them? The second semester I started track, ended up having a, a lot of nice chats with the coach, JT, and um, he just was kind of, tell me like what Christianity is about, what it means to be a Christian, what it actually looks like to be a Christian and to walk like a Christian. My freshman year spring semester I really started like understanding what it meant to be a Christian and I failed miserably for a while and started kind of just like getting the hang of it and I was really like yeah I'm like I accepted Jesus like fully into my heart and understanding like what that meant. From then on like he just was slowly molding me and that love allowed me to stop focusing on myself and just loving my teammates and as soon as I just gave up focusing on my play and just focusing on loving people struggling next to me, it'll really, my game just took off. It was nothing I did. It wasn't that I spent 20 extra hours in serving pass or something. It was taking the focus off myself. God just like t took my abilities to the next level. Well, after my junior year, I had blew out my ankle and I don't know, I was kind of discouraged, just like, that's not where my career is going, but that's okay. And so senior season came around and I was doing really well. I was really blessed. And, and after the season, I was really struggling. Like, I don't know if I should continue. Like, I ended on a really good note. Um, I don't really feel God calling me in that direction. I had signed up to do the open tryout with the national team and I was just, it did not feel good. There was no peace about it. And I was like, I think that's a sign that I shouldn't continue. I should just be done. The day I was going to just re remove myself from the tryout, I checked my email and there's the, it said card to cry. I refreshed my inbox and it said card to cry again. And I was like, something's going on. This has to be spam or something. And I opened it and it was inviting me to down to train with the winter training block in Anaheim. I had to like refresh it and look at it like three times to, like, is this for reals? Like, okay God, I guess this is a sign that I can't stop. I never have played that level of volleyball, that high of level of volleyball. And the girls all worked tremendously hard and the block was huge. I was playing next to girls I had seen on TV and I was really just kind of, I didn't know what to do. I was really just amazed at the opportunity that he had brought to me. It just didn't feel right for me. And again, I was like going in other ways in my life. I just really felt like I had to be done playing. So I decided I wasn't gonna play anymore. That's just dumb me trying to take my plans into my own hands and not really listen to what God has in store. And so I quit. <laughs> my time in Europe, it was, it was a culture shock for sure, trying to get used to playing for a German coach. 
My time at FPU really prepared me because I was able to not focus on myself as much and just like what everything I was doing wrong because there's a lot of pressure of being a professional. You have to perform every night, you have to perform every practice. And so I was able to take the pressure off myself just because of the foundation FPU laid. And I was able to just focus on like, how can I love these girls best? The club is great. The, the board members, the president, the coaches, the girls are all, I can't have nothing but good things to say about them. And they really supported me for my first time, like really living away from home. I'm really excited if I'm blessed enough to go back to them. FPU got a real treat last week as YouTube sensation Jeff Bethke came to speak to the campus and to our student athletes at the annual Athletics Dessert Banquet. We got to talk with him about his journey with Christ and baseball and how all that led to the big stage. I played. I started playing baseball before I could even remember. I think usually when you get to a higher level, most people at that level have played since they, you know, three or four years old. So that was me. Three or four years old, I think, is when I started t-ball, coach pitch, whatever. Um, but I really enjoyed it because I came from a broken home, single mom, stuff like that. And so baseball gave me the structure that I really was looking for. Um, it gave me the community I was looking for, like uh, friends. And some of my best friends to this day were all baseball friends. Um, you know, ones in my wedding, stuff like that. Um, and so it gave me the structure, and then also it just gave me a lot of times too. Without with a, a thing for me that not everyone wants, but my dad wasn't in the in the picture. And so baseball, a coach was a lot of times kind of just a mentor to me, someone I look up to, and stuff like that. So yeah, that, that was why I played and the structure and things it gave to me. Yeah, I mean it's 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 hard for. In all honesty, I don't see how it can't become that when Jesus isn't the center and someone that you're just fully going after because. An idol is anything that you get your meaning from, your identity from, your worth from, and like you're defined by that thing. And whether if it goes good or bad, you are in response to that. And so um, sports specifically, because the American culture we're in, where it's so much money, so much time, so much sacrifice, that's just stirring the pot for like a, a false god per se, because um, those are all the things <clears throat> that usually make one. Right is what you sacrifice for, what you give your time, your energy, your money to. Um, and so then it becomes this thing you elevate, hoping that it'll give you something that it can never give. It can't give you full satisfaction or worth or identity. And it was never meant to. And when you try to get that, it just kind of strains the relationship you have with sport where it's never working and you, you seem a little bit off. Or if you're succeeding a lot, then you seem too puffed up, whatever it is. Um, and so that was me. I mean, that was just very, fairly common. But, you know, I was the guy that looked at my stats every single day. I was the guy that was defined by, if I, if I had a bad, you know, if I went 0 for 4, it's like my week was terrible, you know, like I just couldn't operate. And so that was that was me for sure. And, and it took me a while to see that it's not sport. It doesn't rule over me. I rule over sport and it's just a gift and a game and I can actually enjoy it better when I see it like that. Yeah, so for me, it was totally um, not uh, overnight. Like, you know, oh my goodness, I totally feel way different. The, the way I explain it is that, you know, Jesus really became, started to become attractive, and I started to really like the, the, the walk with Jesus and the joy he gave became attractive, where I started kind of just reading the scripture and really wanting to dig in and pursue him and get more of him. Um, and then a couple months in, I just kind of looked back and was like, oh, well, I guess that can, means I'm a Christian because I'm like, I, I want him, I'm following him, and that's kind of what he says. He says, follow me. And so it was almost like an accidental thing where I just was doing it, and I kind of was just like, I want more of him. And then I looked at actually objectively my life, and I was like, well, I guess that. That's what he wants me to do is follow him. So that, that was me, and it wasn't, a lot of people don't like that because it's not very theatrical or anything, but that, that's how it was for me. Yeah, so two things for me. One, from a sports standpoint, I really just started to enjoy it more. Like I was so free to fail, which I'm gonna kind of talk about tonight, right? That I, my identity isn't how I do, so I can just give it everything because if I fail or I succeed, that's not my ultimate worth. And actually what's funny is I started to actually kind of succeed more when you're free to fail, when you can just go after it and dive and slide and do your thing and just give everything you have, not worrying about how it's gonna pan out. It actually is more enjoyable and sometimes you actually do a lot better. And then from a Christian perspective, I started to see baseball as a missionary opportunity, right? It's like a missionary is not someone who goes to Africa and digs wells, that can be, but a missionary is just a Christian. And so um, I started to see baseball as the avenue where I knew the language Language, I knew the culture, I knew how people operated, and so I could use that to kind of tell them about Jesus, share the same struggles that I went through, and to show them how Jesus is better. You don't make it something that it's not. Um, don't elevate it to a point where it can't sustain what, it, what you want it to give. Um, and so the visual I think of is, you know, don't build this huge castle of sand because sooner or later, even if you get to the professional level, which I think something like 0.1% of people do, there's crazy stats out there, even if you get to that level, it's still going to end sometime. Like no one plays professional sports, you know, until they're 97. No one does that, right? And so there's a level of you don't put your chips in something that won't even um, be there the whole time. And so use it. Um, 
and, and use it as a tool, use it as a missionary opportunity, use it as something to grow with relationships and how you view life. I, I've, I've had a ton of life lessons I got from sport just because how you operate with the team and with other people. So I would say that use it, see it, um, and enjoy it because then rather than squeezing it so tight to try to get life out of it, you actually just enjoy it and you look back and say, man, that was fun. So that's what I would say. Here with this week's highlights is Brandon Tripp. The Sunbirds looking to finally break through with the win over number 14 Grand Canyon and finally break their 19 game winning streak on the mound in the first game. Ryan Castadio doing all he can for the Sunbirds to get the win. He threw five and two thirds innings allowing just three earned on seven hits and striking out five. But GCU's Coley Bruns was one better striking out six in a complete seven inning shutout while allowing just one hit. Top of the third and GCU looking to add to a 1-0 lead as the single gets through the left side, but Steven Lozier comes up firing and guns down Michael Pomeroy at the plate to keep the game at 1-0. But in the top of the sixth, Kyle Rady singles up the middle. That will play two and the Lopes pull away in this one 5-0. Second game of the day and the Sunbirds get one more shot at breaking the streak and salvaging a win in the series. Top of the first and FPU got to it. Brett Bishop singles to get the Sunbirds runners at first and second with no outs. He went for for four in the game. Then Kyle Copham puts one into right center. That will score Lozier from second and the Sunbirds strike first for the first time in this series. FPU would take a 3-0 lead FPU would take a 3-0 lead, but in the top of the fourth, Brandon Smith gets the Antelopes on the board with the solo shot. His first of the season, same inning, and the base is loaded. Steven Lozier with the defensive miscue in left field. That will score three runs. GCU ran off six unanswered runs and took a 6-3 lead into the bottom of the sixth inning. In that inning, Kyle Copham singles the center, and that will bring home Brett Bishop, and Sunbirds are down by just one. Bottom of the ninth now, and John Kortoff lays down the high-chopping bunt that moves the runner over to second. After a wild pitch and two walks, the bases were loaded for Lozier, who delivers with the looping single to the left field. That scores Bauer, and Taylor comes around looking for the win. The throw is not in time, and the Sunbirds walk off with a 7-6 victory and snap the Antelope's 20-game win streak. Um, they're really showing a lot. They really are um, in uh, – they, they have a way to get something going in every single game we play, you know, whether it's – um, you know, a five-run lead or a deficit that we are trying to overcome or, or whatever, we always seem to find a way to make, um, make a push. And Yeah, well, we've been playing well late in games, making comebacks. It's kind of scary for our pitchers, I guess, but we've been fighting hard through every game, and what do you know, last inning again, we just get another comeback win. You know, quite a few guys uh, took great A-B, starting with Matt Fox, you know, being able to lead off the inning again. I mean, he's really done well for us in the last two weeks just grinding out ABs and and uh, just being a really tough guy to pitch to and he does everything and he'll wear it he'll bunt um, he'll hit the fastball hit the breaking ball and and he's shown it and he's done it all and been a great example um, to our team yeah you know this is actually a special group of guys you know we've been down quite a bit this year but I feel like we've always found a way to come back whether it's uh just hitting the ball or, or taking at bats just having team at bats and I feel like we got a group of guys that's willing to do whatever they need to to get on base for the team and it's 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 fun to play for it's fun to play for that kind of team Fresno Pacific participating in the first ever CC2A Invitational Tournament, taking on the number two seed Sonoma State, and the defense was on top of its game. Kelsey Harvey had 12 saves for FPU. Offensively, it was the freshman Emily Marr setting the pace with the hat trick, but it was too much Seawolves late as Sonoma moves into the semis with the 11-7 win. Sunbirds now in the consolation game, facing the only team they have beaten this season, Cal State San Bernardino, and both teams were stingy on defense. But Danny Mortimer finds the back of the net. She finished with FPU's second hat trick of the day. Second quarter, Sunbirds up 3-1, and Marr nets her fourth of the day. FPU up 5-2 at the break. But the Coyotes shut FPU out in the third, and they tied the game at five, heading into the final frame. And Danny Mortimer coming up huge with the game-winning goal as the Sunbirds snapped an 18-game losing streak and move on to day two of the tournament, 7-6. That was big. Such a young team, such a small team. I mean, they're 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 learning how to fight. They're learning how to capitalize on that desire, and they've started to really pick up on the little things we've been working on all season. Just the little fundamentals that we've just continually uh, uh, just hammered into them. And so, but to get that win was huge. Uh, to be ranked seventh and now fighting for a fifth place in the tournament uh, is is big for us. Big for the the developing team that we have this year. So, um, all overall really excited for the girls. The girls I know are really pumped up and so I think we're setting up for a lot of success tomorrow. Yeah, it, you know, they uh, 
they uh, they we got a little slow, a little worn out in that third quarter. Um, but yeah, San Bernardino fought back into it as a tie game. But when when Danny put that quick one in, um, it just it made all the difference. The girls regained that momentum, they regained that intensity and that fight. And again, it's just that the the youth in our team learning how to fight for what they want, and that's that's a big thing for us. So those two goals went in in the fourth quarter. It just re, uh, reignited that flame that they had in the first half, and which was awesome. And they they're uh, they're growing a lot. Thanks, Brandon. Last Friday and Saturday, the baseball team was unable to leverage quality starts from its pitching staff as the Sunbirds dropped all four games in San Diego to Point Loma. FPU got great pitching from J.D. Sales and Ryan Castadio, but couldn't bring the bats to life in a 4-1 and 2-0 loss. The athletic department hosted its annual awards banquet last Wednesday night, which commemorated the school's first year as a part of the NCAA Division II and the Pacific West Conference. Kathleen Anderson received the Sunbird of the Year Award, Malika Tuovanuovo took home the Senior of the Year Award, Scholar of the Year went to Sienna Gonzalez, and Wesley Coles and Sarah Hill both received Freshman of the Year Awards. Malika Tuovanuovo was named National Athlete of the Week by the NCCAA for the second time this season. She rebroke both the FP and Fijian national record with an astounding 42-foot, 2.25-inch triple jump at the Pomona Pitzer Invitational this past weekend. It's that time again, Sunbird fans. Even though it's so easy to stay up to date through this wonderful technology that gets posted on the website for your convenience, we still need those bodies showing up at events. So here are all of the many opportunities for you to catch your athletes in action. Baseball will be hosting Dixie State right here on our home field in a doubleheader matchup. Friday's game starts at 4 p.m. and Saturday's games begin at 11 a.m. On Saturday, women's water polo is heading down to Riverside for the Lancer Mini Invitational, where they'll face Azusa Pacific at 10 a.m. and California Baptist at 1.30 p.m. FPU will be hosting a fitness fair on campus April 20th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. This event is promoting health and wellness for the community and will include visits from companies such as GNC, Jamba Juice, Sierra Running Company, Pita Pit, Herbalife, Wawona Fruit, and more. So come and check it out because all participants will receive free admission to the FPU baseball doubleheader against Dixie State. See you there! Remember, you can stay up to date with all the latest news, scores, and highlights for the Sunbirds at fpuathletics.com and on Twitter at FPU Sunbirds. Glad you could join us, and we'll see you next time right here on Inside Fresno Pacific Athletics.